Today, unbounded recklessness. The RBA has lost the plot. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. And John Adams, the economist, just had to come back and make another show because he's really upset. Hello, John. Hello, sir. I, I, am, I am shocked. I am stunned. The phone has been running hot. I've had several direct conversations with members of parliament. I've had messages from advisors. Um, uh, both last night and this morning in response to the speech by the Deputy RBA Governor. Uh, so he gave a speech at the, um, uh, uh, which was the annual dinner for the Australian Business Economists. And he, t he had a lot of um, very interesting things to say about 10 years looking back in terms of uh, looking back from the GFC. But uh, there was a number of statements that have direct policy implications for today and going forward. And there was a number of big sensational articles coming out last night uh, with The Australian, with The Guardian, and, and Twitter was running hot as well. Yes. And, you know, you sort of start reading the article, uh, or his speech, I could say, and it's sort of looking back, rearview mirror, you know, what happened, how they handled it, da, 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 right? But towards the end, it really does start to pivot Yes. And it, you get a very specific view of what they're thinking and how they would potentially react in a time of crisis. Yes, yes. So, so I mean, it has been, you know, I've had private conversations with particularly uh, journalists going back at least maybe 18 months that the thinking of Treasury and the Reserve Bank was to take rates to zero, to do quantitative easing. I mean, Steve Keen said QE is coming. Uh, and basically those what I would call fears, were effectively exposed transparently last night. And there's a couple of quotes we'll go through. But, 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 but you know, uh, what these statements and the intent of the RBA to move forward, I mean, it is the most reckless economic policy since the First Fleet. I mean, I mean, I mean these guys are literally out of control. Yeah, and if you think about the centre of gravity, it's all about debt, and not really worrying particularly about debt, or indeed saying we're not even sure what the right amount of debt is. Exactly, exactly. So, 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 so why don't we get into like a, a, a couple of very specific quotes and, and, we'll, and, we'll, and we'll break them down. So, so, so this is obviously from last night, um, Deputy RBA Governor Guy Dobell. Uh, he says, uh, policy capacity matters, both money, monetary and fiscal. Fiscal space is really important. We still um, have that in Australia. It is less clear there is fiscal capacity in some other countries. Um, he also said monetary capacity matters too. The Reserve Bank has repeatedly said that our expectation is that the next move in monetary policy is up, is more likely to be up than down, though it is some way off. So, so, so th this confirms what the governor said at the CETA conference dinner when we did that episode about gold. That that you know. If, if required, they will, they will cut rates, they, 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 they will print, they will get people into further debt. And there's a big, this big reliance about the, f the federal government stepping in with, with, with a new round of fiscal stimulus. Um, so, so, so again, um, uh, it is all about debt. It's all about kicking the can down the road. It's all about perpetuating the bubble uh, until that point where the, where the system can't take it any longer. But these people have no concept of, of being uh, prudent uh, in terms of managing the economy. They're just going to, to take this to the extreme uh, until the system can't, can't take it any longer. And, and that is one of, the, I mean, that's likely to be a very inflationary type of situation. Um, and, and, and that, when they lose control of the currency, uh, I mean, and we've spoken about this in previous episodes. The Turkish lira this year fell 32% in three weeks. The the uh, in the Asian financial crisis, the South Korean currency fell 40% in three weeks. I mean, I mean, I mean that that's where this madness is is going. And and and, and you know, people in Parliament um, are, are not willing to stand up to 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 this so-called independent um, you know gang of bandits. Yeah, and if it's true that they are effectively saying we're going to just provide more stimulus and create more debt, take the interest rates ever lower, 
yes. as required, right? Almost as if there's no limits to any of this stuff. And as you say, the critical question becomes, at what point does the currency break? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and, and it is something I, uh, when I had some, certain conversations in Parliament earlier this week, and I told these guys, you can, you can play the stimulus card up until a point, and, and once people realise, uh, so we owe the world a trillion dollars in net foreign debt, and that, that debt's going up. Um, you know, uh, I think we can't pay it. I, I, I think, I think it's, it's a matter of time until people realise we're not good for the money. And, and, and once the creditors realise, oh, Australia's not really going to pay it, pay, you know, have any intention of paying this debt back, um, watch out for the dollar. The dollar will go through the floor. Um, and, and then when that happens, you have a big choice. Runaway inflation, or if you're going to prop up the dollar, you, you dramatically raise interest rates. You know, when, when, when Soros crashed the pound in the early 90s, they raised interest rates 5% in a day to, 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 to keep the pound stable. Um, now, if you're on a variable mortgage and rates go up 5% in a day, you are literally wiped out in 24 hours. I mean, I mean, I mean this is the extreme nature of this radical Keynesian communist thinking, um, and it is just madness beyond any sense of comprehension. Okay, well, you can't pull back from that, really. It's mad. <laughs> it is. So, 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 so now let's get to the point of QE, um, because obviously Steve Keane said QE is coming, mm. and, 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 and so the deputy governor referred to QE. So let's go to the quote on that. He said, um, but should that uh, turn out not to be the case, uh, there is still scope for further reductions in the policy rate, as in interest rates. It is the level of interest rates that matters. They can still move lower. QE is a policy option in Australia, should it be required. Uh, the RBA's balance sheet can also uh, expand to help reduce upward pressure on funding if necessary, as occurred in 2008. So it is, it is unequivocal. They have said they're crystal clear in black and white. QE is on the table. Um, uh, you know, they, 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 they tried it QE 10 years ago. They took interest rates to the lowest recorded levels in the history of humanity. Um, the biggest debt bubble in the history of the world. And, and, and you know, when, when Bernanke, for example, said, well, we can reverse QE within 15 minutes, which he actually said in congressional testimony, complete baloney. They, they, they can't get out of these debt positions. Um, so, so, you know, if we go to QE and they start buying government bonds, yes, we will avert a crisis, but we will just be kicking this situation down the road to a point of no return. And when that, once we reach that point of no return, um, the horrific implication, economic implications for the middle class are, are beyond what this generation has ever dreamt of experiencing in this country. Right. Dear RBA, please change your policy. Well, well no, no, I think, I mean, like, it, it is gone beyond that at this point, unfortunately. Yeah. These people, I mean, you look at the governor, you look at this, this deputy governor, they have been in the bank since graduates. So, so, the, so most of the recruitment process for the RBA comes from the elite sandstone universities. If you go do honours, then they basically walk into, for example, I did, I did my bachelor's degree at UNSW, University of New South Wales. Well, once you get into the honours programs with some of these elite universities like UNSW, um, uh, University of Sydney, etc., the RBA will go to the academics and saying, who's your best students? We want to poach them. They bring you in as graduates. They groom you up for, to be 25 years in the bank. You raise the senior levels, um, and, and, then, and then that is it. There is no outside thinking, um, uh, and these people won't change. These people have been trained and thought and brainwashed in a particular mode of economic thought, and, 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 the, and there is no uh, possibility of them to change. So the only way to save the middle class at this stage is, a, a, you know, uh, we need to clean the bank out. The governor has to go, and some of, the, some of his henchmen at the deputy level, that they also have to go as well, because they have been trained in this Keynesian nonsense uh, and now they are taking policies to a, to, to a position where, uh, where we've never gone before as a country um, and the implications are truly horrific. Listen to what you're saying, John. You know, the, the fundamental question that I come back to is he asked about what the right amount of leverage is and said, we don't know what the right amount of leverage is. That sounds absolute nonsense to me. Exactly, exactly. So, so, so let, 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 me, let me go to that quote that he says in the speech. So he says, quote, Finally, uh, I will pose a critical but unresolved question. 
What is the right amount of leverage in the system? Uh, when is there too much? And then he goes on to say, but we still don't really have a great handle of what level of leverage is dangerously excessive for governments, households, banks, and corporates. Uh, this surely is a major challenge for the economics profession to address. This is the most outrageous, uh, reckless statement in, like, in the history of public administration in this country. So you and I for six months have been saying that the level of debt in the economy it is the biggest since the first fleet. When we've had, in 2007, when a former deputy RBA governor, who, who's no longer working at the bank, said that in 2007, the quantum of debt at that point exceeded the 1880s and 1920s, when we had obviously two depressions in 1892 and 1931. Uh, so, so the level of debt today, it is beyond anything that this country has ever seen. And anytime we've had anything close to this, we had a horrific economic event. And he's now posing this so-called academic question in a public forum where, where, where the, the words of senior bank officials actually do matter because it moves markets and it moves um, people's perceptions of, of what the economy is doing. He goes, well, we don't know. Now, the question is, we, you and I have been saying, we do know. That, that, that this is way too high. This is this, it's, we are beyond excessive. The, the, I, mean, I mean, this is the most extreme level of debt. It can now can debt go high? It can go higher, but 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 but, but there can be no question that we are at excessive levels now. So so the real question for me is, what if he's wrong? Um, if you are a doctor, if you are an engineer, if you are a lawyer. You must, after you get your degree, you get to get a professional certification. And then if you engage in um, uh, deliberate malpractice or fraud or what I would call gross professional negligence, um, you can lose your license, you lose your job, you lose your career, you, you could face civil penalties, or you could go to jail. Well, the question for me is, because, because th 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 this is, is not just academic, this is life and death. Uh, I mean, 7.30 on, on ABC had a story earlier this week about mortgage stress, and you already have people crying saying, I can't pay, can't, can't pay my mortgage. He's saying, well, we don't know what the level of, of excessive debt is. Well, if the bank is wrong, people will die, people will cry. Um, you know, children in this country will go through experiences that will be seared in their brains for the rest of their lives. I mean, and just like the generation of, of, of the depression, they didn't forget those stories. So, 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 so th this, is, this is the most serious economic thing we could be contemplating. And he goes, we don't know what we're doing. Um, and my question is, well, if he's wrong, now I'm saying categorically he is 100% wrong, him and the whole bank, you are saying, and, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you have, to some point, have been saying that the, 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 that, the, that the officials are wrong in terms of their assessment of the economy. Well, where, where's the accountability? I mean, the economists don't have that same professional standard certification that doctors, lawyers, and engineers have, but they are, in my view, engaged in gross professional negligence, when they are wrong, because I am categorically convinced they are wrong, uh, they need to face civil or criminal penalties because what they have done in the last 20 years with, with monetary policy and what they are now doing today will result in horrific injury among a big chunk of citizens and someone has to face the penalties of, of this criminality. Well, I guess the final question is who is the RBA actually working for? Because it doesn't seem to me that it's working for the community and for the bulk of Australians. They, they are tied up um, in, in some grand ideological illusion written by a guy in 1936, and those ideas are just ludicrous. I mean, I got brainwashed in those when I went to university, the whole Keynesian paradigm. And once you start, take a step back and start to look at, the, at, what, at who Keynes was um, and what he actually wrote in that book, it is mad, you know, it is mad. And he said in the book, uh, the, the general theory, take interest rates to zero. Um, uh, the long term doesn't matter. Well, what we've done for the last 10 years is the copy, uh, copycat um, prescription of Keynes. Um, um, and, and, and it is going, you know, uh, never been tried before. Um, and this is the biggest and most dangerous economic experiment in human history. And it's going to be bad. John, I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. So there you go. Very solitary warning there from John Adams about what's going on. And, you know, I have to say, too much debt is probably the biggest challenge that we face as a community. 
I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.